What's going on guys? Uh, we're here today with Mr. Rowan Humble. What's going on? We just came down from Halifax, so we are here at 24-7 in Riverview. We're going to shoot uh, a hamstring workout for you guys today. Uh, we'll walk you guys through a little bit too, like what we're doing, form kind of stuff as well. Um, Rowan's really, really meticulous with his form and stuff too, so he'll be a great guy to kind of have on the video and uh, chat with you on some of that stuff. So we'll catch you guys in a little bit. Just water. <laughs> Nothing fancy in there. Yo, okay, so uh, game plan today for hamstrings. Uh, I trained legs two days ago like an idiot. So it was most of quads that I trained, which is good because we're going to hit hamstrings. We're going to do a couple different leg programs. We're going to do RDLs, of course. RDLs are kind of the goat. Um, we're going to do some abductors, we're going to do some calves as well too, so uh, it's a pretty quick workout for the most part, but it's a lot of volume, it's pretty intense. We're going to be training the hamstrings like both through knee flexion and through hip flexion, so that's the big thing a lot of people miss uh, when it comes to training hamstrings. They come in, they'll just do their leg curls and then leave it. RDLs are very important for that reason, that you kind of train the hamstring in a lengthened position. Uh, you also get a whole lot of good involved in that too, so you can kind of bias the way you're doing RDLs. I like to use dumbbells, I think Dylan and Dana usually use a barbell, but for me, dumbbells, like you can kind of manipulate where you put the weight a little bit, and I find it's a little bit easier that way. So um, I'm probably going to stick with dumbbells. I'm also like three weeks out of a show, so I'm, I got a show coming up pretty soon. I was just sitting in the car for two hours. I got to get warmed up. I got to get fired up. So uh, that's the game plan for today. So stay tuned. Like I said, we've been doing this, man, with like Dana and I. It's Julian's training plan that he sent him. It's, it's a bit more. It's a bit more reps than I would usually do on a working set for leg curl. It yeah. is, but again, like when we go do them over there, we're gonna do like a 10 to 12 rep range, yeah, right? Yeah, up and a little bit. It's. I find starting it out and getting a shit ton of blood in there. Yeah. It's like. It's, it's good. pretty effective. Yeah. It's different. I'd never done yeah. it before either, right? And I definitely like doing leg curls before I do my RDLs. For or sure. Or doing my isolation stuff for hamstrings before I do 100%. my. 100. percent I'm you, the same way. Yeah, you'll you'll feel them. It's like you. You tighten them up under load and then you lengthen them. You know what I mean? You exactly. stretch them out and you can feel them so much more and just stay on them. Yeah, I'm yeah. the same way. But, man, just training since I've been home has been so much fun. Great, eh? Having yeah. energy, pushing weight again. Yeah. It's like I missed it because I had like four weeks there where I was like a yeah. piece of shit in the gym. It's like I'm almost in a reverse dieting period too, which is funny. It's just Matt, we got to a point where we really stuck. Like you were trying to push harder and the weight was coming up. You know what I mean? And yeah, I was your body like, was I wasn't responding. So no. you gave me a little bit of carbs, back to cardio down. I dropped like three pounds, did it again. I dropped another three pounds. Now I'm like less than I was on stage yeah. right now. So I'm lighter. And like things are a little different. I don't right. have everything in, quote unquote, that I did before. But right. uh, but I can tell I'm just like finishing touches away. You know what I mean? The body fat's gone at this point. But you've my also got weeks. And, yeah, yeah, right? exactly. And my, body's, and my body's responding in a favorable way and knows what to do with carbohydrates again, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. I just didn't have any carbs or fats for like well, four dude, weeks. So like, long. Yeah. No, I think that'll have you in a better position too when you get to like peak week and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. You'll just be able to handle the food a little bit better. and Yeah, and we're going to change that approach a little bit too. We're going to do like three days. And like now that I'm pretty far into the weight cap, we don't have to worry about making weight. So, right. We, it shouldn't no, be. No, I was issue. actually chatting to Matt there the other day. We were just talking to start filling you, carving you up a little bit earlier. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Like like two to three days of eating as opposed to one big one. One big day. Yeah. Like kind of the same approach, but just long, yeah. a longer, slower. Yeah, I find I, I like sustain the fullness for a while. Yeah. Like if I have like a couple big days, I'll hold it for like three days and I won't look flat for like three days. But then if you deplete the fuck out of me and try to fill me up really quick, your body is just like, my body needs time to like assimilate it, you know yeah, what I mean? To like yeah. actually do something. But that's like also that. a beautiful thing like we were just saying where your food is a little bit different going into the show this time around. Yeah. That you won't need, you're, you're, you won't be in such a depleted state that your body will just be like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. Right? So like adding that food in, you'll be more of a sponge and you'll receive it a little bit better. And yeah. It'll, dude, I'm excited for you. It's I know, I'm excited too. I, I just, just learn so much every show, and that's the thing. A lot of people just like try to hit it out of the park on their first show. You know what I mean? And it's like if they don't, then it's a failure. It's like, yeah, you, know, you need time to learn all that. Well, shit. and the fact that you guys were able to kind of finally be together in person and like work on a lot of that shit. Yeah, it makes a huge learn difference. Learn so much, man. Yeah, just in a couple couple days, right? So, yeah. So it's um, and now it's almost like just controlling the controlling the like 
the stress inflammation response and trying to keep like like the thing is uh, my body retains so much water more than it used to at this point because I've been yeah. prepping since fucking January, you know. Right. So it's yeah. just like so much more sensitive. Yeah. I think well, that the that's, biggest that's the thing, best way to describe it. It's like sensitive to a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest thing, like we were just saying, is like you're you're eager to train because you haven't had this kind of energy in so mm -hmm. long. But I think you do need to just kind of like check right. yourself a little bit and be like, I need the rest. Yeah, I, I really rest. do. As I much as you don't do. want it, I know. I know. It's probably more important. The most important thing yeah. right now for you. I'm is waiting to hear back from Matty, so I'm going to be like rest tomorrow. I don't fucking care if you're out there with the <laughs> He's boys. He's like, I'm in Moncton. I'm training with the yeah. boys. I fuck know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, man. Like I'm training today and tomorrow, but can't can't miss that. Okay, so first working at 20 here. Yeah, let's go. Good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Big squeeze here. Nice. Eight, easy. Good. And come on, halfway. How you kind of yeah. go through it. So I'm really trying to keep my hips locked into the pad is the biggest thing. I want to make sure I line my knee up with the pivot point of the machine. So that way I'm making sure to keep tension on my hamstrings. I'm really trying to just keep tension on my hamstrings the whole way through. Almost treating it like a bicep curl when I come up and squeeze, right? Uh -huh. Hamstrings are almost like the bicep of the leg. Exactly. So that's what I'm really trying to focus on now. I have no idea what rep I'm at now. But we're gonna keep going. Come on. Good. Couple more, come on. Good. Good, one more, let's go. Hard, squeeze. Good. <laughs> Fucking fuck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a nice leg curl machine, actually. It feels really it's like it very, you It's in. very symmetrical, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's the big thing. It's like, machine like this, you want to make sure you're locked in. I don't want to, like, hyperextend my knee, but I'm trying to come... I'm basically trying to get as tight as I can within the pad. So I, I drop it as low as I can. You I don't do want to too. have pain, I but just slow from the first rep, you don't have to worry about anything. And then, yeah, make sure your knee lines up with the pivot point of the machine. So if you're wondering, like, where do I set my seat at? Somewhere where your knee lines up right here is where you want it. Make sure your body mechanics line up with the machine mechanics. And uh, yeah, control that shit. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, no, it's good. Mm -hmm. Exercise is that pivot point in your knee. Yeah. And like yeah. you said, your body mechanics lining up with the machine. Yeah. Um, you'll see a lot of people do this one. Yeah. And scoot their ass out. And hike back and, like, too. You could probably get a wicked contraction doing this, but you're losing. You're gonna lose the tension on the hamstring too. and yeah, the stretch, yeah. right? So you're actually like reducing the range of motion, back. the active range of motion there. Exactly. And then yeah, like you said, I fucking. Jam I, ham I hammer it down. I know a lot of people like don't hyperextend your knee joint. It's like, but if I'm slow from the first rep and I can create tension from the first rep, I'm not worried about it. Exactly. Good. Nice, man. Oh boy. Easy. When I get in and do these now, I'm like, okay, I need to go lay down on a softball and just roll out my hips yeah, and yeah. glutes like. That's good though. This is, yeah, another the abductors, another area that I don't really cover as I much definitely, as I should. I definitely neglect these a lot more yeah. than adductors. Yeah, um, like, I, don't, I don't neglect adductors anymore, but. I find for uh, abductors, I like doing them at the, at the beginning, mm -hmm. and honestly, mainly just to get my hips and glutes kind of firing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't find you necessarily need to go heavy with them. Yeah keeping it controlled and getting an actual squeeze, it's like, yeah. you could do it with 50 pounds yeah. as opposed yeah. to like 250 pounds. So no, I agree. It, going crazy heavy now, whereas like with adductors, mm -hmm. you can really hammer the weight, yeah. squeeze it, hold it, control it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah these are almost just like a rhythm. Rhythm and like a flow you get into, you know? Nice. Yeah, this is a, a very undertrained part of the leg for most people, you know Yeah, what I mean? both of these, honestly. Yeah. Um, I'd say adductors, yeah, especially, especially if you're not like doing a, a deep barbell back squat or something. If you're, if you're not getting like beyond parallel in a, some sort of squat pattern, right? You're not really training your adductors. No, off definitely. like most people, you know, like pretty much, yeah. I unless mean, you're taking a, a huge, drastic, wide stance or something, but like it's something that I've always incorporated, and I've I'll always do them, honestly, yeah. like. And they add a lot of width to your leg from the front. Well, just right? from the front, man. Like yeah. if you can stand here and like just have this entire fucking sweep. Yeah. Like 
makes a pretty big difference. So one thing from Pittsburgh, people were like, bro, what do you do for your adductors? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hip adductions. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. The isolate machine. the fuck out of them. It was like the, the nut cruncher machine. Yeah, you really gotta flip the bad boys off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it when you're on cycle, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just get right in there, it's like, oh, we're fine. Yeah. 12, 10 to 12, mm -hmm. a little heavier. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, let's talk, let's talk like focal points for this machine. What are you thinking of when you're doing this one? Yeah, so the biggest thing for me when I get in this, so unilateral uh, hamstring curl. So the biggest thing that I find a lot of people tend to do, and you can probably agree with me on this, when they get in here, they stick their yeah. ass back yeah. and they do this and they curl like that. The biggest thing you wanna do with this machine is drive your hips forward into this pad and keep them locked in there and just be solid in there. Yeah. And from there, there, from there, you just hinge at the knee. So it's just bring your, bring your heel to your ass as far as you can and squeeze the fuck out of your hamstring. But a lot of people, you see them doing this exercise improperly, they tend to sit back and uh, almost cheat a little bit yeah. because it is a little bit easier to use momentum yeah. when your hips are kind of open and uh, free. But yeah, I find locking that that hip, that, those quads into that pad, and then pulling from there. Yeah, that's perfect. If there's one tip that I could give to somebody for a standing knee curl like this, uh, I would literally just say jam your hip into the pad and just like control it. Yeah, 100%. Your hips in the pad, you're not gonna have that lower back flexing out. That's the other thing it too. It shouldn't it takes look like you're fucking in the air when you're doing it. Most people do way too much weight on this. <laughs> yeah. And it also tends to be the people with the smallest hamstrings that do the most weight on this yep. improperly and hump the air, so. But it's, it's a humbling exercise when you do it like this. Like, you guys should try it next time if you are one of those people who's done this exercise improperly. You'll be able to do half the weight that you're used to because you don't have that leverage. You're not creating that leverage from, yeah. you know, having your hips set back. Yeah. So yeah, I'm almost like, I'm pressing my, my hips forward, but I'm also like pulling myself into the machine. Mm -hmm. the same as like the seated hamstring curl, you're locking yourself into that position. So for me, like, yeah, I'm, I'm almost like humping the machine in a way, but I'm using my hands here too to like pull myself in and lock myself in. And then from there, I'm just hinging at the knee and squeezing. Yeah. It's better to fuck the machine than fuck the air though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting something. Let's go, come on. Good. Couple more, come on. Squeeze it, good. Yeah. <laughs> dude, look at this. <laughs> what do you do, dude? You got a Brazilian butler? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. That's fucked. It's, it's crazy fun. how much more dug out your hamstring is, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, like, the way the pitcher's edited yeah. and stuff, That's too, the hump day like, post. That's a good hump day post. That's a good just hump that. day post, like, yeah. Like, no other contact, yeah, just that. Just that. Happy hump day. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, she's like showing her veins off, and I'm like, I don't have those right now. <laughs> it was my fucking I'm girlfriend. I'm in prep, like, fuck off. Like, I'm the, the I have a show in three days. Yeah. You're reversing. <laughs> don't talk to me about what you don't yeah. want to eat. Like, you can eat whatever the fuck you want. But she's, she's really good about it, and like, it's awesome, because she feels just like you do, the need to step up and elevate, yep. and it's like, okay, I'm beyond this. Let's just eat and go crazy at the end of the uh -huh. show, and like... I don't have any I, I know, I'm now a professional, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I have to handle my shit like a professional, and yep. like, this is kind of my job so well that's like, just it man and it comes back to like we kind of chatted about this before and it's like representing what it means to be a professional yeah in yeah. all regards of like yeah. the sport the the league the mm -hmm. everything and it's like you want to do it for yourself mm -hmm. but also like there are people looking at you and kind of yeah. looking up to you in a sense too and it's like yeah. you need to lead by example no exactly and it's not like oh i'm doing this because i have to lead by example no i'm yeah. doing it because i fucking want to yeah. but and, at and the same time there is that like I don't know what you want to call it, but like this, not pressure, but. Well, there's a bit of a pressure, but like it's not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's, it's a more thing. of like an influence, you know what I mean? It, like, that's exactly, yeah, that's a good yeah. word, yeah. It's, it's like, it's and great. you are, you now are in a position to influence others by the actions you take. 100%. Show, you know what I mean? But so. it's like if you're a piece of shit and fall off and eat like an asshole, yeah. what, what precedent does that set? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, oh, well, you just won and now you don't give a fuck, so yeah. what does that actually mean to you? It's like, no, it's good. Right? And you have to wonder too, it's like post-show, like, do people really just do that because that was the, the the standard norm for a while? You know what I mean? It's like everybody used to just 
yeah. blow up and it's okay to blow up 20 pounds post show. It's right. Like, no, not really. You know, like, but like honestly, if, man, if everybody like, just went up five pounds and like ate till they were full and kept themselves busy and didn't lock themselves in the room yeah. for two weeks, like after keep the cardio show. Keep cardio in, keep yeah. like making healthy decisions, get good sleep, eat a drink enough water, yeah. fucking just like I do what think, you were doing yeah. in prep, but just like slightly up your macros and yeah. just. And you're going to be like pretty satiated. You'll be a little bit more hungry. Like you'll still be a little hungry. Oh, starving, but like, but Considering what you just went through, it's like, what's what's this compared to how right. hungry I just was four but weeks I ago? I think right? like, what we had post show. Mm. I mean, we didn't go crazy by any means. We had we we got we spent fifty bucks US on two pizzas, <laughs> and then we had like a slice each, and we're like, fuck, this is terrible. <laughs> right in the fucking garbage. <laughs> yeah. Although like, the the garlic fingers are good. The cheesy cheesy bread. The cheese bread was good. cheese bread was good. Yeah. 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 You can't go wrong with cheese and bread. No. But. No. You but think you think that that same stance would go with pizza? The pizza was trash. It was so salty and Pittsburgh, just like shitty. Yeah, it was like I'll be like, oh, I have to, I have to train quads every leg day, no matter what, you know. Yeah. Even though we had like push pull legs and I had two different a hamstring day and a quad day, but it was like, I still have to do a leg press. I still have to do all this, but it's like, it, it almost gets so to much is subject to change as you go through prep in terms of like your ability to recover, your ability to recover, and just like I find for me. Honestly, like the leaner you get and the drier you get, yeah. and like the achier you get, yeah. certain lifts and movements are just not. They're not going to happen. Same. And like, like that's the thing is like not getting married to movements, right? One hundred percent. Like I know we all have movements that we absolutely love and are fixated yeah. on, but it's like you kind of need to listen to what your body's telling you when yeah. you get into the depths of it and just yeah. say like, maybe I shouldn't do this because I feel yeah. like my fucking joints are going to yeah. snap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's also just being aware. We're pretty conscious of our, our bodies and what we can handle and listening to like what our bodies are telling us. So. Yeah. And there's always a way to train that muscle without doing that movement. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, yeah. for example, when I tweak my hamstrings doing RDLs, it's like, okay, we can do slow eccentric hamstring curls, two different variations, and maybe like some super light RDLs, you know? Yeah. But like, yeah. I don't need to force myself to do the 140 pound fucking RDLs. No. Well, but I mean, with that we, being said, let's go do 140 pound oh, RDLs. Let's, <laughs> go. let's go. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know, Rowan, about you. I find for yeah. these, again, like where I'm kind of naturally, like my feet just kind of want to sit like this. Yep. I yep. just let them. Yep. And don't, don't artificially dictate your position. Exactly. Yep. But then a lot of people are like really, really stiff. Mm -hmm. I find for me, I like to almost like sit. Yeah. So the first movement here should be like this hip tilt, yep. like this, yep. right? And then kind of like down. Yeah, always leading. A cue that I use for my clients here when I, I do personal training as well is always lead with the hips. The hips should initiate the movement. We don't lead with the dumbbells down, we lead with the hips back. So always the first thing is just this little, almost kind of like buck back with the hips. So it's like, yeah, and it's like as far as your hips will actually travel, yeah. that's the extent of your movement. So yeah. like, you're not, like you said, you're not leading with dumbbells. Yeah. The first movement is this. Yeah. And I continue to sit further and further back, mm -hmm. and that's about as far as that's gonna let me go. Yep. And that's the extent. That's your range of motion. That's your full range of motion. That's your active range that you want. <laughs> Anything more than that, you're gonna start flexing through the low back and you're gonna start uh, having issues there, so. Yeah, as soon as the hips stop traveling back, or with some people you'll find the knees will start traveling forward. That's usually because they're bending their knees a little bit too much. As soon as the knees start traveling forward in RDL, you've taken tension off the hamstrings, you know what I mean, at that point. So 100%. if I get to the point where I'm here, full tension on the hamstrings, as soon as this happens, it's gone. Right, Like yeah, It's really gone. I've lost, I've lost to the loaded stretch component there. I don't think I'm gonna deadlift, man, this year. I don't, I'll do RDLs, but I yeah. don't think conventional deads are really. Yeah. I think a fucking heavy row, after talking to Matt too, that yeah. like about all of it, like. I don't I, think you need to. I think I need to. Yeah. yeah. There's like different. I could probably get away with like a rack pull maybe. Yeah. But as far as like a full conventional deadlift, like what I'm gonna benefit from there, I can just do with an RDL. Yeah, yeah. So, no, he's been great, man. We've been firing. He texted me the other day because I had asked him if he watched the video. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, not yet. I'll get a chance to watch it here in the next day or two. And then uh, the following day, he texted me. He's like, dude, the video was awesome. He's like, I yeah. feel like people are actually going to like learn something from this. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I was like, you'd be surprised at how many people have messaged me and were just like, dude, this is a fucking wicked video. Yeah, like, and like sharing it too, man. Like, yeah. A lot of people care. That's the thing. A lot of people want to see it. So, so I, I was like, yeah, man, like going forward, like I think this type of a video 
that's a lot more informative. Mm -hmm. It's not like overbearing. Yeah. Um, people tend to relate to that a lot more and they're actually yeah. like learning something as opposed to just like watching us clang and bang weight. It's like, yeah, yeah. some people love that shit, but it's not for everyone, right? So. Yeah, I think I think a big thing too is like the conversations we have in between sets. You for know sure. what I mean? Like make yeah. a big difference. It's Absolutely. not even just the breakdown of the movement. It's for like, sure. random it's shit we're talking about like reverse dieting and yeah, you know, yeah, all, the, all these little things, right? things that pop up. But. And uh, yeah, it's something that we're gonna get better with in time for sure, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's been sending me, like we talked about like leg training, and he was mm -hmm. just like, he's like, send me videos of like your leg press and squats. Mm -hmm. So I did, and we were like bouncing back and forth, and he's like, started sending me videos on Instagram. He's like, dude, he's like, you start doing this shit, he's like, your fucking legs are gonna explode. Like, yeah. trust me. He's like, yeah. just apply this. He's like, play with it. I know exactly You'll... what he said. He probably said, feet lower on the pad, get a deeper knee flexion. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, 100%. I know that. Because yeah. like, I, I sent him a video and I had my feet fairly low. He's yeah. like, dude, he's like, you need your heels hanging off like the Like lower. Like yeah, that's way, one. Way lower. You trained with uh, Mike too, right? Yeah. And yeah. did you notice that he didn't give a fuck about that either? He was like, no, we're just training full knee flexion. Like, I don't care if your heels are hanging off or if you come up on your toes no, or whatever. He's 100%. like, just, just bury that shit, you know? Yeah. So. yeah, and just fall into it. Yeah. Like, yeah. not about like... He was like, didn't give a fuck about quad tension or anything like that mm -hmm. on, the, on the negative portion of the rep. He's like, yeah. literally just sink into the rep and yeah. fall into it and just, yeah, knee flexion. Just go with it, yeah. For me, it's something that I also like ankle flexion and stuff. I'm gonna buy a pair of squat shoes. My ankle mobility sucks, yeah. It's horrible. But that's and the thing is like, you can just train, you just use heel lifts, man. Yeah. Like honestly, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything like biomechanically like cheating. Well, no, it's using, just creating an advantage mission. for yourself. Like it's just creating yeah. like almost like false ankle flexion. Yeah, exactly. So, Okay, working? Two working? Yeah, All right. let's go. Yeah, yeah, come on. Let's go. Come on with it. <clears throat> yep. oh, good, yeah, keep tension on. Let's go. I actually never do anymore because I feel like they do make a big difference. I I train them pretty religiously, man. Yeah. I gotta say, I, I used to have fucking toothpicks for calves. You know, I, think. I went through a phase, man, where I probably trained calves like six days a week, like every fucking. And I was yeah. like, not just training them, but like Beat them the fuck up, dude. I'd be fucking standing in the kitchen doing calf raises yeah. like every day, like just at work, standing in line at a fucking grocery store, just like calf raises. Yeah. 